Top of the morning, good afternoon, and a low to planet Earth, a hearty and healthy Irish low. Dermot B here, also known as the Celtic Coach. Cheers. Okay. This week's Friday inspirational rant comes to you from my childhood. I'm going to share a couple of stories, two stories from my childhood and one from when I was an adult, but still acting like a child. Um, create for fun, not results. Now, one of the things that I see in, you know, when I'm working with coaches or I'm working with clients is they create for results, not for fun. And there's always, when I get the result, that's the fun part. And of course, the challenge with that, you might think or know, is that when we're looking for the results to give us the joy, we better get the results that we asked for. And specifically, we better get them exactly how we ordered them. It's like ordering a pizza. If we don't get exactly what we ordered, we're pissed. We're annoyed. <laughs> right? And that's kind of how we live our life. Goals, goal setting is kind of like you throw you throw the goal in front of you like a bone, like a dog with a bone. You throw the goal in front of you. Then you run to the goal. And, and knowing that as soon as you get it, you're going to be happy for a second. And then you throw another goal, another bone, and you run to it and you grab it and you're happy for a second. Like a dog with a bone. Except we throw goals out. We run after them. When we get them, we're happy for a minute. And then we throw another goal out. We run after it. And we think we're only going to be happy when we create the results. So I'm going to throw out an idea that that, that I learned from my coach, uh, Michael Neal, a couple of years ago. Well, many years ago. Um, create for fun, not results. Because I used to always struggle with results, result, results. That was the only thing that I was interested in. And results for me at that time was money. Money in the bank. So I'm going to tell you a few little stories from my childhood too, where I brought a lot more fun into, into work, into creating. And it made it a big, big difference in my life. Now, the first is picking spuds. Now, in case you don't know what spuds are potatoes, those, those things, you know, you make chips out of, fries, and as a child, 10, between 10, 11, and 12, I had to go out and pick spuds. In the freezing cold every morning and in the summer, we'd get up at about 6 a.m., which was horrifying because it was so cold. We'd have, you know, we were, we were, we were pretty poor back then, you know. We, we, were, we were so poor that the only place that we could find money was in a dictionary. We were so poor. And our house was so small that even the rats were hunchback. That's how that's how poor we were. And um, we would have to get up in the morning at 6 a.m. Oh, so cold, so cold. And go out to the field in the middle of nowhere next to somewhere. And we would have to pick spuds. And you bent, you bent over, you have a bag between your legs lying on the ground open and you would just throw the throw the the spuds into the bag and eventually when it got full enough you'd pick up the bag you'd put it down and then you'd fill it up to the top and then at the end of the day you had to um take all the bags that were closed and put them up on the trailer it was backbreaking work i have to say and we didn't get paid much and, and if we did get paid my old man you know god bless him he would never pay us we were supposed to get the money, but we never did. And it was backbreaking work. And it was always, it was never, it was no such thing as fun. It was, it was results. The results was, you know, a couple of pounds at the end of the day. Pounds meaning, you know, Irish pounds, money, euro now. And one day, my brother Patrick, out of the blue, bought a you know it was back in the 80s so you know the stereos you know the big ghetto blasters he comes on the spud field with a big ghetto blaster <laughs> tape recorder with ghetto blaster and he's playing 
you know, best of the 80s. ACDC, Black Sabbath, Iron Maiden, you know, all these wonderful, wonderful bands back in the 80s. And dance, pop music, Michael Jackson. And we're having a blast on the field. We're dancing, we're working, we're working, we're dancing, listening to the music. Now, it only happened once because at the end of the day, my old man said, hey, you can't be bringing the radio on the on the onto the spud field. You know, the boss doesn't like it. And whether that was true or not, I don't know. But I always remember that one day because we brought so much fun to what we were doing that it made the entire process fun. And we didn't care how many potatoes you had because usually, you know, you had to pick about 100 bags every day. And uh, about six hours, six, eight hours of work. And uh, thank God those days are over. And um, that uh, that day always I remember it so well because we brought so much fun to pick in spuds that it just made the whole day a completely different day. So as you're out, if you have a project, if you have something you're doing, ask yourself, how can I bring more fun? Not how can I get fun from this? Because nothing on the outside can give you fun. You bring fun to it. It's like people say, oh, you got to do what makes your heart sing. Nothing makes your heart sing. You have to bring a singing heart to whatever you're doing. It's an inside out world. The feelings come from within. When you're thinking about doing this or thinking about doing that, that's the feeling. The thing doesn't give you the results don't give you a feeling. You might think they do. They don't. It's your thinking about the results that gives you the feeling. Hey, I can't wait to, to, oh, I got my results. I completed this. Oh, I feel great. We feel our thinking. We don't feel the circumstances of the outside world. We feel the inside thinking of the inside world. And then whatever we're feeling, we make meaning about it. That's our whole lives. So whatever it is you're doing, bring a singing heart to it. Hey, how could I make this more fun? Maybe you could play some music and that, that music inspires some joy from within. Whatever project you're doing, try and create for fun, not results. Or bring fun to the creating even better. Now, second one. I'm just looking at my notes here. Okay, mowing grass. Mowing grass. One of the jobs I had growing up when I was about eight or nine was mowing grass. My old man got me a mower and I would go out and I'd knock on the door. I'd go down my street. I lived at 29th St. Benham's Villa Slate Town, County Mead, Ireland. And um, this family of seven. And all of us had to work as kids because we just, there was no money coming in. My old man, bless his heart, he drank most of it. And so we would all go out and work. And I was about eight or nine around that. And um, the, picking the spuds then came a little later. But I would go out. He got me a lawnmower. and said, hey, go out there and, you know, make some money. And so I would knock on the door, say, hey, how's it going? Do you want your lawn mowed? And, and I would mow the lawns. And it was pretty tedious work. And I would do like, I don't know, 20 lawns in a day, you know. And make a few bucks. It wasn't. It wasn't that much, you know. It was the eighties. You know, people didn't pay you that much for mowing the lawn. And plus, in Ireland, you know, all the streets had small. Nobody had a big lawn. Nobody, you know, they had probably a ten by ten foot lawn, you know, and everything was on the lawn. And um, and so I would mow it. And and in order to bring more fun to the mowing, I would sing. That was my thing. That's what helped me to get through tough times was I used to sing. And so I'd bring in this singing heart to the mowing. Now, later on, when I was about 15, I got a cassette recorder, you know, the Walkmans and then the Discmans. But, uh, oh, man, when I got the Walkman, that was like heaven. The one tape you put in the Walkman. Oh, wow. And I would bring a singing heart to the mowing the lawns. And each lawn, I would pick a song, you know, and 
might have been a Bon Jovi song. Actually, early 80s Bon Jovi wouldn't have been around, but uh uh you know, the Rolling Stones, big fan of the Rolling Stones when I was a kid. Um a lot of 80s bands, you know, um Paul Young, all that kind of stuff. And and I would pick a song and I I'd, I'd sing that song when I was mowing that lawn. And then the next lawn, I'd pick it, I'd I think of another song and I'd uh, mow the lawn and I'd sing that song to myself and that was how I got through a lot of the hard days I brought some love a singing heart to whatever I was doing most of us in the world were looking for the outside thing whether it's money or relationship or result or a project we're looking for that to um, to feed us to give us the feeling but the feeling comes within Nothing can give you a feeling. Nothing outside of you gives you a feeling. We feel our thinking. And whatever we're feeling from our thinking, we give meaning to. Oh, I feel sad. I'm sad. I'm feeling sad thinking. Oh, I'm so happy right now. I have happy thinking. And so I, the meaning I make of it is I'm happy. <laughs> That's it. It's really, really that simple. And so as you are out in the world doing things, start to play with the idea that nothing can give you a feeling. The only feeling that you're ever feeling is the one that comes from your thinking. Because we live in a thought. We live in a thought-created universe. Everything is thought. Everything is thought-created. And thought creates everything and then says, I didn't do it. But thought creates everything. And one of the things that we can do with thought is think. We can think about our thoughts. And when we think about our thoughts, we feel our thinking. And when we feel our thinking, we give meaning to whatever that feeling is. So it's never the results that are going to give you a feeling. It's never the, oh, I can't wait to get, oh, I can't wait to do this. And I'm going to be happy when this is over. Oh, when I get that client, I'm going to be so happy. Oh, when I make that money, I'm going to be so happy. But have you noticed that 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 happiness is like toilet paper? It's short-lived. It doesn't last that long. And then you're on to the next role or the next project. All right, third story. When I moved to uh, Northern California from LA, uh, I was doing acting and singing out there and doing a lot of creative stuff. It's very cool. But I was kind of done with LA. I was done with sitting in traffic for 24 hours a day, 23, just sleep for an hour. And I decided I'm go we're going to move to Northern California. The hills are alive in Northern California, apparently. And uh, we moved to California because we wanted more trees. And holy moly, there's a lot of trees here. A lot. Um, and so one of the first things that I did was I created a workshop. And now two people showed up for the workshop after like months of marketing. And by marketing, I mean sticking flyers on the pole, sticking flyers at Whole Foods on the, on the, on the, you know, the, the notice board that they have there and telling all my friends. And I, um, two people showed up. One was 85 and the other was 90. And they were my two friends. <laughs> they were the only two people that I knew in the whole town. They showed up for the workshop and it was a six week workshop. <laughs> we met every, you know, every week for two hours. Now, in the third week, a third person did show up. A homeless person showed up out of the street just to get out of the cold. What could I say? I said, sit there. You might learn something, buddy. He enjoyed the workshop very much. He said, thank you afterwards. Who knows? Maybe he went on to be president. You just don't know. And that workshop, the only reason that workshop for me was such a success is that on the second day or the second week of it, I was so bummed out. I was so incredibly bummed out because two people, my only two friends in the world, came to the workshop. And they came for the whole six weeks. Nobody else did. So I decided I'm going to have the most fun I could possibly have with this workshop. And we did games and I created games for elderly people and I called them elderly things. You know, the one step the creaky move. I mean, all these different times, you know, the slow step. And we had the most fun I've ever had in a workshop. Why? 
because we chose to have fun instead of the results. I was so bummed. I'd spent all this time and effort and a little bit of money um, on the workshop. And the results, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to have at least 100 people in this workshop. Two. Two friends. So, folks, while you're out there doing stuff, do your best to bring fun to the project. Take a project and say, you know what? Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create this project for fun. I'm going to take the results and I'm going to put them off to the side of the table. That doesn't mean you don't have results. Yeah, hey, I want X amount of clients, X amount of money, X amount of this, X amount of that, whatever it is. But you take it off the table as the primary goal. And if it's not fun, maybe it's inspiration. Maybe it's playfulness. And you ask your question, you ask questions like, who do I want to be during this project? How do I want to make this the most fun I've ever had? What inspired action can I take instead of acting from desperation and reaction? <laughs> I know that one well. Um, how can I create a singing heart to this? How can I bring a singing heart? What part of this can I bring more enthusiasm to? What part of this can I bring more creativity or imagination to? What do I want this to be successful for? Do I want it to be successful for me, for others? How can I bring more successfulness or success to the project already? Because all you're ever looking for, all you're ever, 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 all you're ever looking for, Jimmy, I'll tell you this now, is a feeling. You're looking for a feeling. All we're ever looking for is a feeling. We're not looking for results. When we're looking for money, we're looking for the feeling of money. And you can give that to yourself right now. When we're looking to complete something, we're looking for the feeling of completion. You can give that to yourself right now. When you decide, hey, it's going to be a lot of fun when that project's done. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to party. We're going to, you know, celebrate. You can give that feeling of fun right now because the only thing we're ever feeling is a feeling. The only thing we're ever after is a feeling. And if you're thinking, well, it's risky. The only risk you ever risk is a feeling. Unless you're, you know, jumping from a high mountain bungee cord and you know it may or may not work well for you but otherwise you're only ever risking a feeling when you if you want to do something with your life you want to do a project you want to do something magnificent you want to serve people whatever it might be the only thing you ever risk is a feeling nothing else so go for the creating for fun not the results because you'll spend I've spent so much of my life, my oh, a lot of years, when I had hair, constantly like a dog with a bone, running after the results, running after the bolt, after the results. But today, decide, I'm not going to do that anymore. At least for this project, I'm not going to go for the results. I'm going to go for the fun of the journey. I'm going to go for the fun of the creating. I'm going to take inspired action when I feel to. I'm going to sit down and ask myself and ponder and reflect and ask, you know, how do I want to make this fun? What am I doing this for? I'm doing it for the feeling of satisfaction. Wonderful. How can I bring the feeling of satisfaction to this project? I'm doing this because I want to have more fun in my life. God damn it. Bring, decide, choose to bring more fun to the project. I have found in my life, it's fascinating creating clients, businesses, whatever it is. The more fun, the more enthusiasm, the more inspiration I bring to a project, I don't care about the results. I've made such a massive shift to myself in, in terms of results. Now I have clients, paid clients, and, 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 and all that stuff. Results are fine. But boy, when you can start to see that you can bring the feeling of whatever it is you're looking for from the project, you can bring that ahead of time, your life will change in amazing, amazing ways. So slow down, have a cup of tea, ask yourself, what's the feeling I'm looking for here? And then choose to bring that feeling to the project. So at the end of the project, you're not looking for the project to give you the feeling. You've been bringing that feeling the entire project. 
And isn't that nice to know that you can do that? Isn't it nice to know that you can pick a project and bring a feeling to it? Isn't it nice to know that you're starting to get a sense that, hey, it's not the project that's giving me anything. It's not giving me anything. I'm bringing it to it via thought, via my thinking, via feeling my thinking. Isn't it nice to know that you don't have to bash yourself over the head every day to get the results? That you can start to move in the direction that you want to go, but do it from a fun, loving, self-nurturing, playful, inspirational place. Isn't that fun to know that? Isn't it, isn't it nice to know that you don't have to kill yourself to get results? Isn't it nice to know that you can bring more ease? Clients say to me all the time, I wish it was easier. And I say to them, wish you were easier. It's not giving you any ease. You're bringing hardness to the project. You're bringing e not ease to the project. It's like disease, disease. What creates disease? Dis-ease. Well, it's the same for any project that you're doing. You bring the hardness. You bring the pushing. You bring the forcing. You bring the non-easy thinking to it. Isn't it nice to know that you don't have to live your life from a results-oriented place? Isn't it nice to know that you can, that you can bring more heart to a project, more um, creativity to a project? You can bring that to the project instead of trying to get that from the project. Because the project will never give you that. If you look back on your life and you look at all the things, yeah, I can't wait to get that new car. and oh, I can't wait to get that new wife and th that new life and that new house and the dog. And the money in the bank. I've, I've, I've pretty much gotten everything I've ever asked for. And it still brings me back to the place of feeling comes from within. It doesn't come from that. That's fleeting. You know? So I'm going to invite you for do an experiment for the next week. Decide to be a little easier about what you're doing decide to be a little bit easier about your projects your life and in the morning a great practice is when you wake up in the morning you decide hey i'm gonna be easier today as soon as you wake up in the morning somnambulistic state subconscious is open open to suggestions you can you can intend your whole day you can segment intend your whole day just start to feel appreciation for your day and say, you know, today I'm bringing ease to everything I'm doing. I'm going to bring more inspiration. And just say that to yourself for about a minute or a minute and a half in the morning and feel the feeling of ease, appreciation, whatever it is, whatever feeling you want to bring to your day, feel that in the morning. And it will set you up is the best way to get, it's the right way to get out of bed. It will set you up for the day. It's a powerful, powerful exercise at night. 30 minutes before you go to sleep, subconscious open, somnambulistic state has got you ready. Say to yourself, hey, I'm, I'm going to sleep deeply tonight. And in the morning, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to feel refreshed. You can set that up ahead of time. If you ever, uh, if you ever set yourself up, you say, hey, in the morning, I want to wake up at five o'clock. I don't, I, I don't have an alarm. I just tell my brain subconscious at night, I want to wake up at five o'clock and I want to feel in the morning when I wake up appreciative and grateful for my life and I and I want to feel well rested. And it works 99% of the time. It's incredible. Think big, have fun, stay curious, and remember, all is well. Cheers. <laughs>